And now we're going to have some lightning talks. And the first speaker is my good colleague, John Wright. I hand over to you, John. I can see your screen, looks good. You're still muted. You, hopefully you can hear me now. Yeah, cool, yes. Cool. Thank, so the first thing I, I wanted to start by thanking um, the, all the different participants here. So I'm actually a beamline person. Um, and recently we got one of these Dectris detectors, which is fantastic because it produces huge amounts of data. Uh, and together with the upgraded synchrotron, we can do experiments we could never do before. So many of the discussions, the talks, the feedbacks that I see and things that you hear from me, I'm usually telling you about the things that don't work, but there's a huge amount of things that we can do now that we just couldn't do before. Um, so scientifically, this is great. Um, and please bear with me because I'm a scientist. So the experiment that we're doing a lot of is this diffraction tomography. So this little picture here has got something like 1.4 million pixels in it. And each pixel is a 2D diffraction pattern. And what we want to do is to see inside the materials. So the game is to kind of watch what happens inside materials. So we get one of these every hour or so. And if it was raw and uncompressed, that would be 14 terabytes every hour. So computing becomes a bigger and bigger part of science. Um, and we're using this BitShuffle LZ4 format, um, I think like everyone else with one of these detectors. So to give a quick look at the data, we have these diffraction patterns. They happen to look very sparse. So one of the things we can do is just look at the peaks with sparse matrices, um, but we'd like to look at the background as well. And so where we are now is to take these kind of data sets. It takes us around an hour to read an hour of measurement takes like an hour of reading and we're using several nodes in a cluster and that's quite difficult. Um, and we're using the CPU to read the data. Um, and, and I was kind of surprised that it's not faster to read the data. So it's very fast. LZ4 is very, very fast and that's fantastic. And it's much faster than what we had in the past. And this one gigabyte per second is huge but it's not as fast as the detector. And I sort of thought it would be faster than the detector before I got um, the software. Um, and if I run a thing called a stream benchmark, then the CPU itself can go at more than one gigabyte per second. And I sort of thought it would go as fast as the CPU goes, but it doesn't, and I don't really know why. Um, and so there's this new file system here that comes with the computers that goes at two gigabytes per second. So we could be getting up to 20 or 80, but we don't get that. So I looked into using a GPU because NVIDIA give away a thing that does LZ4 decompression. So if you pick a part inside this BSLZ4 format, there's lots of little blocks and they're all eight kilobytes. So one of my pictures has got a thousand or 2000 blocks inside. So you can do parallel on one picture. Um, but we, we scan the, the HDF5 chunks on the CPU to locate these internal blocks. And so this particular operation is a bit of an overhead and a bit of an annoyance, but well, maybe we could get around that in the future. So we, I tried to put together some kernels in CUDA and I'm a scientist, chemist, crystallographer. So they're probably not very good. Um, but anyway, they run and they give back the same numbers. So if I look at the numbers I get back, the bit that comes from NVIDIA, so the decompression from NVIDIA is giving about 120 gigabytes per second on a very, very expensive GPU. So that's very good. And then the shuffle takes a kind of similar amount of time. And then here I put a reduction on to kind of prove that the GPU does some work. And then there's a whole load of overhead down below that, that somebody smart could get rid of by plugging this into a pipeline. Um, on a less expensive GPU, but still very, very expensive GPU, it's something like 50 gigabytes per second. So it's like having 50 core CPU um, and parallel code running. Um, but this is using an old version of CUDA. So there's this massive overhead on the API that could of course be cleaned up because you could stop doing lots of mallocs and freeze all the time and so on. So where are we now? So I, I personally have looked into these chunks and, and can decode these chunks. Um, and you can call this LZ4 thing. 
Um, and there are some what I would call naive kernels. So you could grab these CUDA kernels uh, and look into the code, which is here. And, and you could probably make this faster if you're a C++ wizard. Um, and in the future, things could get better. So you could use streams and, and do image processing on the images. And so maybe I'll stop there if there are questions um, and, and thank people that helped and encouraged me on the way. If there are no questions, I can show some quick example things. So, so just let me know. Okay. Yeah, thank you, John. Very impressive. Uh, just one, is there any questions? Uh, one thing that just comes to mind is, uh, I mean, you, if you're going at 120 gigabytes a second in the decompression, how do you get the data into the GPU at that speed? So, so this is kind of the whole point is that it goes in compressed. So if I put in two gigabytes per second mm. and they're 40 times okay. compressed, it's mm. going to give me out 80 gigabytes per second inside the GPU. Okay, okay. The question so about can... open source, um, all of the stuff on, on my GitHub is, is there and open source. And what I did was to copy and paste from the NVIDIA code. Um, I suspect they have closed source things as well that are better. And there's um, an Intel, um, like if you use Intel IPP, for example, you can go faster on CPU if you use the closed source Intel code. Um, okay, this is like you're missing a license file. Okay. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's like an academic question. story. Question from Zenek. Zenek's put his hand up. So, so I consider this very interesting and exciting, uh, uh, but uh, so, so you say that uh, like the block that we are using uh, by default in the compression yeah, for, for Iger fits uh, the library of NVIDIA. Yeah, so that, if you use the default um, chunk size, then inside of BitShuffle LZ4, he's using eight kilobyte chunks. And this is so that he can do the transpose in L1 cache. So your file, your, your actual data that's inside, if you get the chunks, is, is eight kilobyte blocks. So all of these arguments about how you should chunk your HDF5 file is a bit academic. Because when you read your chunk inside it, it's got eight kilobyte chunks regardless. And what's really annoying is the last chunk in the file that doesn't come out to exactly eight kilobytes then messes up all of the algorithm because you like you end up copying the last three bytes or something. Okay, but there is also HDF5 chunk and the bit shuffle, uh, not LZ4 block chunk. So there's bits, bits shuffle is doing a transpose. So there's actually help or help that there's like my notes, which is maybe not helpful. Yeah, I, I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but, but there's some documentation in here which tries to explain something about what I understood of the format. Um, so there, I think there's like shuffle notes um, which tries to explain how the things are inside the file. It probably needs a picture. John, but you're you perfectly right. You're perfectly right. The idea, the whole idea is that one block fits into the level one cache of the processor of any processor. So it does the, the bit shuffling and then then the compression or does the uncompression then the bit and shuffling. And the idea is to have those uh, one after the other exactly so that the data do not leave the level one cache from the CPU. Mm. This is the uh, reason why. I was always curious if, if what we use fits what is uh, uh, like what, what is on the NVIDIA hardware. Uh, it seems like yes, okay. So for the NVIDIA story, there's a thing I haven't done that would be cool if someone knew about would be to do the bit shuffle and the decompression in, in GPU shared memory, which is supposed to be faster. But then eight kilobytes is quite a lot of shared memory. So then it depends on your GPU no, and how it's much not it has. Done. John, you, any, any GPU that is available on the market now has at least 32, if not 48 kilobytes of level two cache shared memory. Uh, but then you can't have a thousand thread groups at the same time, right? So you'd have to measure you can, the performance. You can, you can, you can, because you will be executing only one work group simultaneously, one block uh, simultaneously on a streaming multiprocessor. So if we do that, it should go faster than what it does now. 
but I guess it would still hit the limit of the LZ4, which is what happens on the CPU. And then if you do the same trick on CPU, since I see there's 30 seconds left, there is potential gains to, to mess around with the CPU as well. Um, so you, you can kind of play the same games of, of you can run the open MP a bit differently on the CPU. So somehow this, tuning this codec, I think is um, fun. This could be interesting, especially when I saw the figures from VJ yesterday, which were much lower, yeah. So 300 megabytes of that, yeah. Uh, if I may, I, I, this is very interesting. Uh, I, I worked on, uh, on custom pipelines, actually, uh, the HICPP does come with a custom pipeline with level, different level of cash, uh, cash in. I, I would like to get in touch and, and take a look at this problem uh, later on. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, thank, thank you, you very much, out. John. Goody, you should have you should have applied for a longer talk. <laughs> I'm a scientist. <laughs> it's very complicated. Sorry, I just wanted to quickly point out um, the numbers that I presented yesterday. Right, these yeah. were. Um, they didn't include just the decompression and just the compression, which I assume is faster. It was about mm. the serialization, which um, uh, I saw that a lot of time was spent in the writing into a file image. So I think that okay. needs to be taken into account. Okay, okay, I understand. But I also had, I'll, I'll send you some comments offline, but